everybody, this is Mrs. Krauss, and this screencast is about pedigree basics. In this screencast, we're going to answer three main guiding questions. Number one asks, what is the purpose of a pedigree chart? Number two asks, what are the symbols used in a pedigree chart? And number three asks, how can we identify the genotypes of individuals shown in a pedigree chart? Let's tackle question number one first. The overall purpose of a pedigree chart is to track the inheritance of a genetic trait through multiple generations of a family. So it looks like in this pedigree chart that's shown, we have one, two, three, four generations based on the Roman numerals to the left. Each circle or square in the chart represents a separate individual. Well, how are Punnett squares different from a pedigree chart? Well, a pedigree chart, as you can see, shows multiple generations, whereas a Punnett square only allows you to predict um, the passing of a trait from parents to offspring, shown in the box. Guiding question number two asks, what are the symbols used in a pedigree chart? We always use squares to represent males, and we use circles to represent females. If you see an unshaded square or circle, that's going to represent an individual that's normal, that does not show the trait that we are tracking. If the square or circle is shaded, that's going to represent an individual that has the trait we are tracking. When you see a horizontal line between a male and a female, that indicates that they are married. And if you see a vertical line that branches off from those two married individuals, that's going to show their offspring or children. Okay. An example of a trait that we might track using a pedigree chart would be hitchhiker's thumb. So hitchhiker's thumb is a recessive trait and it's shown in the picture to the right. That's when your thumb can bend back a little bit. The other version of the trait, the normal version of the trait, would be a straight thumb, which is dominant trait, and that would just be straight up and down as shown in the picture to the left. So if we were trying to create a pedigree to show the passing of hitchhiker's thumb throughout a family tree, we would use the unshaded squares and circles to represent the normal trait, straight thumb, and we would use shaded squares and circles to represent the trait of interest, which is hitchhiker's thumb. Our third guiding question asks, how can we identify the genotypes of individuals shown in a pedigree chart? Well, in order to answer this question, we're going to look at a pedigree that shows the inheritance of a trait called methemoglobinemia. I believe, methemoglobinemia, something like that. Uh, this is a really rare hereditary trait, and it's caused by the presence of too much methemoglobin, which is a non-functional blue form of hemoglobin in the blood. Now, normally hemoglobin is red, and it binds to oxygen and helps carry it throughout the bloodstream. So methemoglobinemia would be having too much of this other version of hemo uh, hemoglobin, methemoglobin. That actually causes the skin to appear a bluish color, and um, there's a very famous family called the Fugits who lived in Kentucky, specifically on Troublesome Creek, and this is a very old picture of the family back in the day, and you can actually see that some of them have skin that's tinted blue from too much methemoglobin. Um, this is a real picture. This is not photoshopped, and this is a current member of their family who's alive today. Very blue. Okay, now we're going to be looking at a pedigree that could potentially show the inheritance of methemoglobinemia. Um, however, this is not actually a pedigree for that trait. It does show the inheritance of a recessive trait, just like methemoglobinemia. Um, however, the actual pedigree for the Fugit family is very, very complicated. So we're just going to stick with this one that could represent this trait. Okay. All right. So we see this pedigree again right here. And we're going to be identifying uh, genotypes of certain individuals within the family. So we know that this is an autosomal recessive trait, which means it's a recessive trait found on a non-sex chromosome. There are two alleles that we're going to use to represent the normal skin color allele and the blue skin color allele. 
So big A is going to represent normal skin color because it's dominant, and little a is going to represent blue skin color. Therefore, the possible genotypes or combinations of these alleles would be big A, big A, big A, little a, and little a, little a. Both big A, big A, and big A, little a are going to code for normal skin color, whereas little a, little a is going to code for blue skin color. So let's say I wanted to focus on this section of my pedigree. It looks like I have the mother, individual four, and two children, individuals 10 and 11, showing the trait. I know that there's only one possible genotype, little a, little a, that could give these individuals blue skin color. So I'm going to go ahead and write in the genotypes of those individuals. And they have to be little a, little a. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, whenever we see um, the inheritance of a trait from parents to offspring, each child is going to receive one allele from each parent. So we know that this child here could have received a little a, from the mother, but that means her other little a had to come from her dad. So right away, I know that her father had a little a as one of his alleles in his genotype. How do I know what the other allele is? Well, he's an unshaded box, which means he has normal skin color. So he has to have at least one big A for normal skin color because that's going to be dominant to the recessive blue skin color allele. Okay. Now, some basics about this pedigree. We see three generations here. One, two, three. And it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine individuals who show the trait blue skin color, and everybody else does not show the trait. They have normal skin color. Now, in the follow-up questions for the Explore activity, you're going to be asked to um, answer some basic questions about this pedigree. Now, the questions might ask you to explain the relationship between two individuals on the pedigree. Like, for example, individual 8 is individual 17's mother. You may also be asked to identify the genotypes of particular individuals on the pedigree, just like we did up here. Or you may be asked to use a Punnett square to show the possible frequencies of certain genotypes in the offsprings of two parents. For example, let's say I wanted to set up a Punnett square between parent 3 and parent 4. We already know their genotypes. The mother's little a, little a, and the father is big A, little a. Okay, so when I fill in my Punnett square, it looks like I am going to have two out of the four children with the genotype big A, little a, and two out of my four children with the genotype little a, little a. So if I was asked to answer the question, um, what is the probability that parents three and four will have another child with blue skin color? I would look at my Punnett square and I see that the probability is two out of four or 50%. So that's how I would answer that question. Okay. Now at this point, we have answered all three gui guiding questions. What's the purpose of a pedigree chart? What are the symbols used in a pedigree chart? And how can we identify the genotypes of individuals shown in a pedigree chart? Thank you very much, and I hope this was helpful.